This is Corrine Carpino from Corrine Carpino Art. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm going to show you how to make a cute little uh, greeting card using Graphics Duralar Wet Media Film. So let's get to it. So as I said, today we're going to be using the Duralar uh, Wet Media Film. It's an acetate alternative. It's a clear film. It's treated on both sides to accept water-based mediums, markers, and inks and it won't um, be chip or run. Um, I like to use it for painting compositions and artwork surfaces. And if I don't like something, I can just wipe it clean, which is really great. So I'm gonna cut some sheets of these and I'll be right back. Okay, so you should, as you can see, film is see-through. Um, I'm gonna put a piece, which is five by seven, um, on a piece of paper on my uh, work surface. Um, so that I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm gonna do a Christmas tree lot. And so what I've done is I've taken my little piece of five by seven film and used some gray ink to start and just drew four lines. So this is gonna be the background of my card and then we're gonna turn the paper over and paint the front. I am going to start with slate gray ink. And I have some on a little palette right here. And this I don't have any mixative with. I want to just keep it really light. And I want it there's a hint that there's a tree back here. It doesn't have to have a lot of um, definition. Just off in the distance. So that's also why um, I don't have the trunk of the tree all the way down the paper. It's just off in the distance somewhere. Let's put some middle branches on it too. In the front, we'll add some more, make it a little fuller. But again, it's just abstract. And I'll just come down through the ink that's already there. We'll make this wider at the base. So we're going to the Christmas tree lot and we're gonna pick out our tree. And there's lots of trees on the farm, in the field, already cut in the lot. And we wanna create that sense of depth. Okay, so the ink is wet in my palette. Usually I like to use a dryer. In fact, I'm gonna start and just see how far it's going to um, bloom before I start to use it. So I started on the bottom, make some bows coming down out of the middle. Maybe this one is a little bit different, right? Because on the lot, they're all different because we spend our time looking for that perfect tree. Okay. And make sure the middle of that stem is covered. And so when I go over the middle of the um, trunk there, it just takes the ink out, so I'm not gonna see the trunk coming down the middle of the tree on the other side. So that's kind of a pretty one. A little bit of gray underneath where there's some ground. And let's just check that. Okay, so that's about what I was looking for. And I'm gonna want the next layer to be a little bit heavier. So I'm gonna rinse my brush here. And in this other palette, I've mixed up a little bit of moss ink um, with snow cap. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of that. I don't want it to be too heavy though. So I am gonna add some alcohol to it. It's been sitting for a little while and I want it to need to be constituted a little bit. And I'll just remix it up. And wipe my brush so there's not a lot on there. And these trees, that might be a little bit tall, but I'm gonna start just getting my trees in. These are bigger, these are more forward, um, but you know, they all look different, so I'm not sure. We'll just see what we decide this one's gonna look like. And again, you're not gonna see all of it. Now, the, I do wanna check and make sure that the part that's coming down over the gray tree actually looks like it's in front of the gray. And you can see it does, because it's heavier, because I have the snow cap in it. Um, 
so that's a good thing. Okay, and we'll just continue middle branches, outer branches. And this is another tray. It's got a crooked stem. <laughs> as trees sometimes, crooked trunk, I should say, it's not a stem, as trees sometimes do. And let's just, while this is still wet, we can move this around a little bit. And I might even lighten it up a little, so I'm gonna go back through with just a damp brush and tap it here and there. I wanna lighten this up a little especially my ends. I want it to be quite so dark back here. I want to reserve the darkness for the tree in the front. So just a damp brush and breaking up the ink and moving it around. I can break it up in the front so that way it looks like there's branches in the front. I'm not going to see much of this because it's, again, we're turning it over. So just a little bit of alcohol help this move around. It can look like it has some snow on it because we're breaking it up on the tips. And you're only going to see part of these trees anyway once we put the trees on the front. better. Okay, so there's our second one in. I'm going to get our third one in. That's going to come down a little bit further. And again, we're just going to build it right around the top there. So I'm just using short strokes. I uh, There's folks, I'm sure, who do lovely realistic trees. That's not my way of painting. Um, but what I really want to do is have the viewer look at it and say, oh, it's an evergreen tree. Trying to hold my brush back a little bit um, so I'm not right down on the barrel of the brush. Some of these may be fuller than others. Branches can go in different directions. And then I'm going to do the same thing and break this one up. Okay, so everything is at different heights. You'll notice I have four in the back. I'll have one on the front. And so we'll have an odd number of trees, which is more pleasing to the eye than an even number. And again, I'm just going to come in and break this up a little bit. Just a damp, damp brush here. Just pulling from the tips towards the center. It is going to make the ink bloom. Things will get thicker. And it's okay. So I just want to kind of let the ink do what it wants. There's um, the um, moss ink actually has some blue, I think, in it because I can see some blue coming out as the um, alcohol hits it. So it is that more of that dusty blue, green, gray color. Like this is a little bit too much, so I'm just going to pull this back. So that's a nice thing. If you want to change the shape of anything, uh, because we're working on clear plastic, you can just change whatever you want. Just add a little alcohol and pull, pull back whatever you don't like. I think I want to add a little thin, I'm going to make it thin, uh, ground here. So let's just put some ground around the bottom of these trees in the back. as if there's some ground. Just keeping it really light though, so it's almost just a dirty look. And we'll get a little bit more for this side. And we just want, we're just creating some texture really for the ground. We're gonna have a big tree to go in the front, so I'm just adding alcohol and creating some texture. Let's see what we have. 
Oh yeah, it's just a like little texture in the snow, footprints in the snow. Um, we'll probably add a little bit over here too. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll come back and do the other side. Okay, my background is dry. And in fact, I've decided that before I actually turn this over, I'm gonna add a few more um, of a gray uh, trees in the background. So now we're gonna start with our main tree. So I'm gonna go back to my number eight brush. And that main tree is gonna fall right in here and all of this is gonna end up in the background. Get that tree is gonna go, I don't want it to be to a little off center. So I'm gonna put it right down through here. And that one's gonna be the tall, big tall tree. And we'll start putting some little branches off our tree. We are gonna be adding darker colors to this. So I will get some of this going. It's really the edges of the tree that are gonna be the lightest. And I'm gonna leave some room between branches. And when I add my dark inks in, it will cover up what's behind there. So I'm just kind of doing some sketchy branches. This is a huge tree. So I'll just sketch them out here on the left hand side first. Just kind of sketching in where it's going to go. Give myself some placement here. I'm not going to see much of this tree at all. And I can tell that some of these branches are too long. So before I get too far, I'm just gonna pull them back. I'm gonna now go into bottle ink and some nice dry ink. Just gonna come in here, this is bottle, and start to get some branches. I want some branches down the middle too. And just kind of sketchily put these branches in. Okay, so for my next layer, I'm gonna mix some um, eggplant with the green and end up with a nice dark, dark, dark color. All right, let's get some of the darkest areas in. Getting a little more alcohol evaporated out of here. So some of our darkest areas need to come in where we actually have some fullness underneath and then we will add some more um, green on top of that. Okay, so my ink is drying out, which is good. Okay, lots of dark and darkness in the front here, the base. Continuing to mix the ink in the top of my palette Getting kind of a dirty, dirty color, which is all right. I actually think I would like some more um, green in it. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of Everglades, which I have, which is just a slightly different color green than the um, bottle, which is a little bluer to me. And yeah, there we go. and get some darkness going. That'll help add depth to have some nice dark in there. And don't forget, we want some of those boughs coming down over the front, which we'll get when we um, add some other green in. Okay, the next step I'm gonna do is use my um, Everglades. Oh, actually this is bottle, the other one was Everglades. 
as you can see, they're so close together. And I'm just gonna start to add my other branches right on top of that. And that darkens it up very nicely. I'm putting some branches in the front here. And then I'm gonna go back and add some more botanical. a little skinny so let's just take some of our evergreen or everglades let's make that tree a little bit wider a few more tips out here on that side. Now you can see because of where I place the trees, I totally lost that other green one. Um, so watch your placement. Um, I still like it. All right. And we're going to go back to our botanical, a little bit more botanical, and kind of put that near the ends. And add some of those highlights to the middle of the tree. So it looks like we have some branches crisscrossing in the middle. Nice full tray. So I am picking up some ink, which is okay as I'm filling in the front of this tree. My damp brush is picking some up. So now before I add any um, white, I wanna do something more with the bottom here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that brown I was using, nice dry brush. And let's start to create some of the shadow from the tree. We and let's make our trunk a little more definitive. There we go. Gives a little more um, interest. We can do that for this one here too. Uh, we can take some of our gray ink, even though these are in the background. We have a couple, a couple that we could get a bit more gray in the bottom. Okay. And I know I'm also going to want to put some ornaments on my tree. So I'm going to splatter the tree with just some alcohol and break up this ink a little bit. I want to make sure it all doesn't go on one side of the tree. splatter in here. Okay, because I have this tree behind it, this side of the tree is definitely darker. And just for fun, um, I can just use some markers. You can use any alcoholic markers you want. These happen to be cure color. Um, but where I splattered, I can start now. Uh, these have a fine tip on them to just decorate the tree. So I can put some red lights here and there. On my tray. And then this other color that I have is kind of a, it's called cadmium orange, but it, it is a kind of on the yellow side. And maybe get a few of those. 
little glow going. Kind of small lights on our tree. I mean, it's gonna be just a cute, cute Christmas card for your very favorite person who you wanna give a hand-painted card to. Right in the middle there. Okay, and then I have this one, which happens to be, um, it says purple, but it's more like magenta. Or maybe I did pick up the purple. No, nope, it's more like magenta, that's what I thought. So it's a really red kind of purple. And some of that. So these could be lights, they could be Christmas balls. Maybe these are a little bit bigger. Just looking to see where I had some space that needed some color. You can tell I like this color. I'm putting a lot on. <laughs> okay. So there's that tree. I'm just gonna dry that a little bit. I'm gonna turn this over and I wanna splatter the back side a little bit too. And so I'm gonna just take this dirty ink and do some splatters on the back and put some snow on these other trees. Okay, Let that dry a little bit. So that broke that up nicely. And let's also um, add some splatters of snow cap as if it's snowing. So I have my little um, cup of snow cap here and I can add some to it. Really love the light that we got um, shining in that tree. And I can put snow on the boughs of the tree all right, so I have a filbert comb, which is nice because then the um, edges kind of edges kind of come out a little bit. So let's um, get a little bit of snow cap. Um, I'm trying to get the thick stuff in the bottom of the cup. So it's nice and thick. And let's start on some of these boughs to just put a little bit of snow cap as if it's on the bow itself. And so it helps just holding that brush on an angle so it looks like it's coming out. So it looks like we actually have boughs in the front of the tree. A little snow on it, just a touch. And so nice thick ink. You can use the side of that filbert to get it on the edges of those branches. More branches in the middle of the tree. Some certainly up here in the boughs as if, as if there's snow on it. I don't want to overdo it too much, but I like this, the uh, tacky snow cap for this. And now I want my snow cap to be pretty loose and I'm just going to tap some snow. So there's some stuck in those branches. And now I've got snow coming down. Some of it looks like it's coming down heavily. <laughs> Just a little bit. There we go. Now, right here, I got a little bit too much snow, but since there's nothing on the back side of this, 
um, I can simply take a Q-tip and put a little alcohol on it um, because this is clear plastic and I can simply pick that up. So some of the real advantages to working on this clear plastic besides being able to paint on both sides. And let's put a little bit of snow on the ground. So I'm gonna go back to my Filbert comb. Again, very, very little ink on it. And I'm just gonna tap. I get the tacky ink out of the bottom. I'm just gonna tap as if you've been walking around that tree farm, right? Looking for our favorite Christmas tree here. And there's snow on the ground. And those um, shadows are sh showing in between the snow, snow right up to the bottom of there, and around the tree, of course. I'll leave the rest of the painting to the viewer's imagination about the snow. Definitely want to have some around the front and the sides as if it's sitting. Sorry, I know the paint, paper's moving as I do this. It's because the ink's tacky. And we put some tacky snow right up over the bottom of the trunk as if it is. I just love the texture we get as if the tree is buried, bottom of it's buried in a little bit of snow. So now the painting's essentially done and it's time to mount it to a card uh, for gift giving. So this is just a piece of cardstock that I scored and um, made into a five by seven. Now, I'll probably just cut this picture down slightly um, to fit on the front of there, but won't that make a lovely Christmas card? I hope you enjoyed this presentation of how you can use graphics, Duralar, wet media film, to paint on both sides of the paper and create a lovely holiday scene. Thanks so much for joining me today. Happy inking!